Well, hi there. This is a snapping turtle sitting in my lap. If you follow this channel, you'll know I have interacted with a lot of dangerous animals, both in captivity and out in the wild. But I am about to have the scariest experience possibly that I have ever had with at least a reptile. In my opinion, the crocodile monitor is the scariest lizard on the planet. Now you know that I love Gila monsters. They don't scare me at all. But big monitors can be intimidating. I mean, look at the teeth on this Komodo dragon. And while crocodile monitors are not quite as big as Komodo dragons, they are still one of the largest. A big crocodile monitor could put your head in its mouth. And look at these teeth. Compare those to the Komodo dragon. Tom Crutchfield, who I'm about to go visit, was once bitten on the hand by a crocodile monitor, and he needed to spend five days in the hospital afterward. When I handle venomous snakes, and I've done that on a number of occasions, even in places where medical attention wouldn't really be possible to get, the goal is to never ever put yourself in a position where it is up to the snake if it's going to bite you or not. If you use the right tools and the right techniques, you should never be in a situation where it could make such a decision. And while venomous snakes are not necessarily more aggressive than a lot of non-venomous snakes, many of them could become uh, quite mellow and, and reluctant to bite with, with a lot of handling, the reality is that it is by tools and technique that you avoid venomous snake bites and not by trust in the animal. Too much trust is what puts you in a situation where you could end up in the hospital or, or much worse. But Tom doesn't want to show me how to restrain and move a crocodile monitor. He wants to bring me up close and personal with crocodile monitors. But before we do that, I want to take just a moment to talk about my buddy Bubba Chunk. When I got this turtle, I was promised by those that handled him that he was extremely aggressive, even for a snapping turtle on huh, Bubba. And he legitimately can be if you handle him in a way that he doesn't like. For the first year that I had him, I was extremely careful with this turtle. But little by little, I started to understand his personality. I learned what he liked and what he didn't like. He learned to trust me and I learned to trust him. And today, our interactions are based not on tools and technique, but on mutual trust and mutual respect. Is this a thoughtful, intelligent creature or a mindless killing machine? Now I want to be very clear that I know he could hurt me. That possibility is always there and I accept it. But I've spent the last three years getting to know this turtle, what he likes and what he doesn't like, and this is where we are. And that takes us back to the crocodile monitors. Bubba Chunk here doesn't scare me because I know snapping turtles, and, and more than that, I know him personally. But I don't know crocodile monitors. While snapping turtles can hurt you, Crocodile monitors can kill you instantly. So, let's go down to Florida and get up close and personal with crocodile monitors. When you do reptiles, you gotta think about their reaction to what you're gonna do. Now, if we're trying to get this lizard to come out front, if you go back there, it's gonna distract him because he's curious. Mm -hmm. It's the same if it's upset. Give them respect, mm -hmm. always. You want me to pick you up? That's what you want. You want me to pick you up, don't you? You're such a good boy. See him taste me and he has no way to say he likes you except with his tongue. Mm -hmm. Really? He doesn't know. Underneath him, his chest. Yeah. You got him? Yeah. Alright, here we go. So this is an animal that a lot of people fear because it is a very powerful animal. They've got absolutely enormous teeth. You know, they're, the claws, you know, even without trying to hurt you, they can hurt you with those. Just me picking him up. That's absolutely right. But the relationship you've developed with this, this lizard, and it's obviously very mutual. Like, how did this begin? Well, it began, we got him from a friend of ours and he was, he had bit him and hurt him really bad. He'd had him for a couple, three years. Uh, living in West Palm Beach, and he was 
seven feet when we got him or seven and a half feet, not as big as he is now, but he was big. And it took us about a year to train him or more or less get him to accept us and bond with us. It's really more than, mm -hmm. ow. Look at that. <laughs> now look, any lizard will let you pick it up by its toe. <laughs> It's pretty. <laughs> That's a pretty calm lizard. A pretty calm lizard. But so anyway, so it took us a, a longer time for him than the wild ones because he didn't like people at all. Mm -hmm. And that's a lot of times when private people have these, our biggest problem with them is getting them over their hate for people because they're intelligent enough that they recognize. And when they're kept in small cages and treated badly and they're in stress all the time, they're very defensive. And one of these is a bite from one of these is a life changing thing. Mm -hmm. The worst I've ever been hurt was a warning bite with a relatively small female croc monitor and a warning bite on one finger, and it crippled it. But you can tell he knows. Of course he does. They all do. You just can't see that, most people, because the ones that most people keep are too afraid to let you see the kind of animals they really are. Look at that mouth and those teeth. Those teeth. Those that mouth, he just opened his mouth long enough, well, enough that he could have went completely around your neck with his jaws, mm -hmm. <laughs> which would be death instantly because of the teeth. But he honestly really likes you. He's spending an ordinary amount of time on you, and this is the second time that you've come in here. And he definitely wants to get up on your shoulder and say hi to you. Hey, are you a curious guy? Rub his back like that, lightly. Oh, God. Oh, nope, yeah. nope. If you don't want, don't Too do it. Anything, to whenever he doesn't want you to do something, stop doing yeah, it. Back away. When he backs away, because that's Give just, me. that's how you get them over being afraid or stressed. Because they can't, we don't make them do anything. We. Mm -hmm make them, we accept what they do and then manipulate it into something that they might like, you know, and then once they learn it, then a lot of times that they'll do it, but you can't make this thing do anything. Yeah, and that's my favorite sort of interaction with reptile. There's some animals like bearded dragons that are so complacent that they'll let you do things. There are other reptiles that they won't let you do anything and yep. every bit of interaction you have is on their terms. And that's a special, special kind of an experience. And I think it's the best you can possibly have with any animal. They invite you into their world. A lot of times people don't realize it. Like we got a rescue rhino iguana because the rhino, the iguana, as soon as they open the door, he'd open his mouth and do run and do that and run towards you as fast as he could, which is a happy thing. Mm -hmm. But they thought it was attacking them. Yes. And then when I got in here, I go, and they go, well, we, I can't keep it. They're just afraid of it, mm -hmm. just because it acts like that. I think it's very natural when you don't understand the behaviors of an animal to view anything that, you know, anything that involves charging, open mouth. It's a threat. It's a threat. And, you, and you can turn it into a threat by yeah, the way that you react right. to And it. you can turn it into a serious, life-changing accident with a crocodile monitor. Mm -hmm. Simple to do that by simply not giving them the respect that they need, which begins on how they're kept. That animal's over here by us. He's over here because he wants to be, because mm -hmm. we can't make him do anything. And he had enough, because this is our second time out here today, and he mm -hmm. was on the ground. Now, he won't be able to stand it. If we stand here long enough, he'll come back over. <laughs> he, he will. Also, reptiles have something, and you may hear this as a new bio accepted biological term soon, reptile time lapse in terms of cognition. Because what happens when a mammal or a bird sees something it wants, 90% of the time they'll, or, or they want to do something, they'll do it without thinking. Mm -hmm. Reptiles don't. They'll sit, look, think, and then they'll do whatever it is that they want to do. However, the temperature they are affects their cognition. Mm -hmm. That's why handling reptiles that are really cold or cool is actually incredibly dangerous. If you come out here, and the few times it's dropped into the 50s here when Bill's been outside, and if we went to pick him up, he'll hiss and open his mouth only because he can't process on who we are and what's going on around him well because he's too cold. Mm -hmm. And people don't take those things into consideration either, ever. And when people have a venomous snake collection, they wonder why the snakes try to bite them, and when they're putting them in the cage, nine out of ten of the people will tap the tail to make it pull its tail in faster, to make your job faster. Mm. And when you do that, the, the snake will immediately spin. You see it, 90% of people keep venom of snake do this. I don't care what kind, if it's a rattlesnake, cobra, doesn't matter, they tap the tail. And you're enforcing with that animal the entire time that, in fact, you are dangerous. See what I told you? Yep. I know what they're going to do before they do it. Absolutely. I do, because he can't stand himself. He just said, there's nothing for me. I didn't see food, but he just can't be over there by himself. Yeah. <laughs> this is emotion. What else could it be? Yeah, it's, yep. Look who he's going straight back Pure to. Curiosity. He's going to try you again. He, he really wants to see what you're about. See if he can climb on my shoulder. Yeah, but he likes you to do that. He wouldn't do it otherwise. 
See, he smells this cut in the blood, too. Do you see him pay attention to it? Yeah, and he's curious, but he's not. No, no, he's I mean, not. He knows, he knows what it is, knows who you are. Exactly. Look at that, look at that process. That is so impressive. Just an incredible, incredible animal. His claw spread out is damn near as big as mine. <laughs> and, and I think your relationship with these animals is completely changing the perspective that people have. I hope about so, because they're so wonderful. See how loving he is? Yes. He's not trying to hurt me. Oh, heavens no. He wants to get on me, and he wants to tell me he likes me. Mm -hmm. He doesn't want me to leave. And if he could, he'd go in the house. He'd follow me in the yard and go 100%. in the house, believe it or not. No, I can't, Bill, because you cut me, bud. People just can't believe that reptiles can be like this. And this is a crocodile monitor. Oh, yes. <laughs> I mean, I know it's hard to, to believe. Put your other foot up, bud. That's what we do usually. Yeah. <laughs> you are, you're a lover. Man, does he love you? Yes, he does, and he loves Stacy more. <laughs> believe it or not, no. no. Incredible. Is seeing is believing. This I is all about emotion. This has nothing to do with food, no, anything. I, I bet he would walk right past food to get interaction he, with you. He actually will. Oh, really, what he likes me to do is hold it so he can take it out of my mm -hmm. hand. I see one of your eggs, buddy. I see an egg down there for you. Oh, hand me that egg for him if you don't mind, because I can't I be, this to get the won't bother you. You don't need to do all that. Yeah. Just pick it and pick it up. He, 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 he's not going to jump down after me. He knows there's an egg. Come here, buddy. I got it for you right here. Hey. See that egg? <laughs> you know I always take care of you. You know I do. What was that German term you mentioned? Earlier? Umwelt. Umwelt is seeing the world through the eyes of the animal that you're trying to learn the behavior of because this thing does not view the world as we see it. He's viewing the world mostly through his Jacobson's organ and his olfactory abilities with his tongue. While his eyesight is good and certainly he can hear, that is not the major determining factor that he makes in deciding if something is good or not good. Mm -hmm. It's the tongue. That's what you see active all the time in most squamate reptiles and that's why. And this is a squamate reptile, meaning lizards, uh, snakes, and amphisbenus, you know, like amphisbena alba or uh, amphisbena uh, polygenosum. The whole time I'm here, he's only want, he wants this one thing, and that's to get on more closer interact. He'd really like to be taken in the house, <laughs> like, to, like walk around, but I just can't. Buddy, I can't do that. Look how long he actually is. As far as the emotional part, how can anyone say that that doesn't, I don't, you can call it love, you can call it like, you can call it bonding, you call it, I don't care what you call it. What most people are starting to want to think of it as and call it, like, like Gordon and some of the others, is bonding. Mm -hmm. Because it's very much like birds. Oh, I've got uh, emerald tree skinks. Yeah. And I, I originally... We, we have them too. In the you've got them? Yeah. They're the most incredible animals. You know, and they, they reminded me of tree monitors mm -hmm. when I first saw them. I have, I have one green tree monitor. And it's similar, but with them, it, you know, it's almost well, they, more. Well, they have to, it's not if they're not afraid of you. Yes. If they're afraid of you, it's Oh, you'll, you'll never even see them. No. You want to see a tree monitor that's not afraid of you? Absolutely. I told you about with the tail sticking? Absolutely. Go look at dirt. And I, I appreciate what you were saying before because I got my tree monitor a little bit older and he was already very afraid of people. Yeah. He's, ca he's captive bred and I've been building trust with him for a long time and he'll come and he'll stand on my hand to get food. But that's as well. You can't pick him up because if you try to pick him up, he'll think you're going to kill him. Yep. So it has to all, all be his. Terms. It has to be his idea. Mm -hmm. Sometimes he's down this time of day. I'll just show you Scarface. Here, here, I'll get him. He's in the box. I think this time of day. But it seemed like he was maybe a little bit more banged up than they thought. Well, he was banged up when he. I called him Scarface because he had a giant scar on him. I bought him as a female in a trade from Joe Swatowski. When I got it, it's a male with a scar on his face all the way down to its shoulder. And about that big around, and like big, like seven feet long. And when I put it in the cage, it ran and smashed its face. Mm -hmm. Ten days later, eating chicks out of my hands, mm -hmm. sitting on the box. Because he hadn't been in captivity long. Oh, he's up here. 
Come here. Hey, there's Scarface. Come here. He's the biggest one, isn't he? Yeah, Scarface, come here. He, he won't hurt you at all. You put your hand up there. He's magnificent. See what I mean? Wild cotton, pet him, touch his face. Pet all that I just am not tall enough. Stand up on that rock and go up there where you can see him, and he'll come over to you probably. Just like Bill. Yes, see? he See? That was in New Guinea in 2020. That's incredible. That size. And it oh took about a week goodness. to do that, or two weeks. <laughs> And he, he climbs on you, you can pick him up, you can touch his back, but we can. Look how big his head is. He's incredible. See that big scar? Yes, I do. Well, it's, it used to be white and pink and run all the way to his front leg there. He's healing up so well. Yeah. And what I'm trying to tell you is, it's not one. It's all. It's all. Because, because it's, it's not about them, it's about you. us. A hundred percent. And it, you know, and it might take them a few weeks to yeah, understand. It depends on the individual animal. Who we are. And how you keep them. Mm -hmm. But the main thing I found with crop monitors is one thing that you have to do that changes all of them. That Easter was very untrustworthy in here when she lived in with Bill. Now that cage is eight feet tall too, except she can't get up eight feet high. She can only get up about six feet. I put her in this cage where she get eight feet high, change personality overnight. With our tree skinks, yep. I, had them, I had the enclosure in one area and we never saw them. Yep. And I moved the enclosure and they would jump right onto you. You know, oh, they yes. were just- Of course. People don't get it. I try to explain, but even a lot of my peers, especially the, you know, the boomers have a hard time changing their minds about what should be and what shouldn't be. And a lot of older people do. You just get set in what is right and what is not right or what you can do or the kind of animals they are. But we all have to evolve. I mean, certainly I'm a boomer. <laughs> but, you know, just you learn, you know, and if you don't learn and evolve, I mean, it's one of the things I don't like culturally sometimes, you know, within the reptile hobby, we almost don't let people grow. No, we don't. We shame them into it or attack them. Yes. And, and you know, we can, we can recognize that everybody starts somewhere and the, all we can ask from somebody is to continue to get better. Yeah. And learn more. I mean, uh, a master forever remains a pupil. He's been loose. Oh, there he is. He's been here for seven years. And uh, when I first put him here, he used to bask on the wall between my neighbor's yard, but mm -hmm. he won't ever go over. over he, the wall. he knows where he lives. Well, you think he, they can't get out of here if they want to? <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, that wall would be no Well, it's a, there's a fence up right there where he can climb up and just climb up. And not only that, these, uh, a cyclora can, if it really wants to, can run and just jump and hit the top of that fence and go. Mm -hmm. You can <laughs> stop it. But they're not going to do that. You know, the only thing that would make them leave being chased? Yeah. If I put a bigger lizard in there. Oh, well, yes. They'd be gone in a moment. I think this is Derp. Derp, come here. Derp. Now, what I want you to do is walk around with this, just sitting on you, so okay. you can feel it crawl. Derp, come here. Come on. I want you to feel his tail on your arm, though. Let yeah, him keep the your hands, hands off the tail. Let him use it. I want to feel those cups. Feel, feel it. You know, yeah. Kind of stick to you. Wait till he puts it around your neck and stuff, and you feel how he hangs on. You, you, you don't have to do anything. Just come on. All right. It, it won't run. Oh, no. Ever. <laughs> it's doing what he wants to do. It's being a tree monitor. Like that's not afraid of people. It's Look, not. it's looking in there now to see if there's food in your tie. You find something that's what it's doing, see? No, 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 just watch, just don't touch it. Watch what it does. You learn so much by just watching. Now, he's using that as a way to Is see his, going his Oh yeah. Oh shit, it will too. Usually if they get a window out, they'll take it. Yeah. You? Not him, because he likes people, or she does, she wants to be. They like their, their, she's exploring her tactile sense now. There you go. But who would believe that? There you go. There Instead of trying to run away, it's like, it's like you were, it's like you're a tree in the wild. Absolutely. Come here. And she's right where she wants to be. Yep. See, she feels secure and she's all happy. So, we, you know, we use her as an educational tool and an ambassador animal. We would never breed this, even though I could. I just cannot hybridize it. Is it a black green hybrid? Yeah. Watch it feel its tail. Uh, put your tail right up under here, just to let it look. Look on each scale how there's an indentation. On and it probably has fringe stuff on it that we can't see. You know, if you see, see this each scale, the lines. Yes. 
on the belly scoots of snakes, they've got a, they're much, much grippier when you're going mm -hmm. against the grain, than, not even from the edge, mm -hmm. but it's something at the molecular level. Right. And this, this feels very much like that, you know? It's a whole scientific paper, it's just that I don't have the time or the inclination. And it's not important enough to matter. You ever had a tree monitor that acted like that that far? Just one. And it was a captive bred one that was highly these, socialized. These from blue them. ones are still like that. They're like that. They're wonderful. I think almost any tree monitor, if you can get in with it, yep. and just let it, let it explore just don't you. do anything. Let yep. it look at you. Let's walk back it'll, over. It'll turn into up. this. Well, it'll take time, but yeah. It will. Yeah, we got it. Go ahead. Now, now I want you to feel the tail now. Don't, don't touch it. Don't touch it. If you do put it under there, let it. I want it to, it to position its tail on you. You cannot position its tail to do that. It has to. It's like a gecko engaging its pads. Now, what's going through the thing's mind? It's sitting there. It's looking at everybody. Everybody's new. Everything's strange. But because it's not afraid, it actually you're enriching it too. Well, I lived, and I had I think exactly the kind of experience that Tom wanted for us to have. I think I, I learned the things that, that he intended for us to learn. And I gotta tell you, one of the things it's done for me is it has altered my interactions with Gus Gus here. Gus Gus is a good lizard. He's a wonderful lizard, but he's a powerful lizard. He could deliver one of the worst lizard bites you can probably get, though not even close to what the croc monitors would do. And that day with the croc monitors, I put more confidence in croc monitors than I do in Gus Gus. And there's a reason for that. And a big part of that reason is self-preservation. With those croc monitors, and really with almost any predator, the worst thing you can do is pull away frantically. Quick motions like that are going to elicit responses from the animal of I've got to stop this thing from fleeing from me. And so in the presence of the croc monitors, the most important thing I could do was not be afraid and trust them. This required me to step outside of myself a little bit and not focus on how much damage those animals could do to me. Uh, the reality is they could do an incredible amount of damage. But focusing on that, focusing on the fact that they could tear my arm apart, they could kill me immediately with a bite to the neck, that was just going to make me afraid. And, and while it is good to be cautious and aware and not overly confident, it's also really important not to approach them with fear because fear will get you hurt. And it was a constant bit of mental gymnastics to avoid that. Now something I've never really done with Gus Gus. Gus Gus has bitten a few people. They've always done the same thing to him. And frankly, I think anything would bite you if you did this to them, which is people have stuck their hands straight into his face. And mind you, his eyes are on the side of his head, so he can't see that. When he can see you, he's not an aggressive lizard. He doesn't do anything to hurt you. But when you come straight at his face like that, he just catches something out of the corner of his eye and he has to bite it. But as a result, I've been reluctant to ever put my hands in front of his face at all. His bite is tremendous. This, this lizard is much smaller than a croc monitor, but that head is not much smaller. The teeth are not anywhere near as scary, but these jaw muscles are serious. And even though I would way rather be bitten by Gus Gus, I don't want to be bitten by Gus Gus. And so I've, I've avoided that just by avoiding ever going out in front of him, ever really letting him smell me, uh, on my hands or anything. I, I will set him on my shoulder and, and he's a good boy. You know, he's, I, I've, I've been comfortable to put him up here for a long time, but I've been reluctant to ever let my hand go directly in front of his face to let him investigate me. Since this experience, I've had more confidence in him. A big part of my previous interactions with him have been a little bit like with the venomous snakes, that I never put myself in a position where I have to trust him. I trust Bubba Chunk, honestly, more than I trust Gus Gus. And uh, I'm now putting a little bit more trust in Gus Gus, and I will tell you, he's done nothing at all to violate that trust. He is such a good lizard, and this is gonna make him a better educational ambassador because 
I'm learning more and more what you can and can't do with him and how to help people have a really good experience in his presence. He's such a special animal and, and I really am thankful to Tom for opening my eyes to what thoughtful and intelligent animals, lizards like tegus and monitors, even the scariest one of all, truly are. I strongly encourage you to follow Tom Crutchfield on social media. He's got a wealth of understanding from a lifetime. Well, interacting with these animals. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Woo! Uh, I was just going to stand over here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now they avoid the helicopters. Oh, jeez. Okay, where were we? Uh, something about Tom Crutchfield and how his lifetime of interaction, spending countless hours in the presence of these animals, has given him an understanding of their behavior and psychology that is probably virtually unmatched by anyone. And so we have a lot to learn from people like this. As always, like and subscribe, and we hope to see you real soon. I'd like to take a moment just to say thank you to our patrons at Patreon who made this entire trip down to Florida and all that we learned from Tom and the other amazing videos we filmed while we were there possible. If you'd like to support us in creating content like this in the future, please consider checking it out. <laughs> like that. Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. That was explosive. Yeah. Is that normal? Yeah. That was a good one though. <laughs> that could have been way worse. What? Like, How? Uh, on me. Uh, Will, I have a question for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you just wash your hands just because? <laughs> Leave me alone, okay? <laughs> I just wanted to wash my hands. Wait, wait, so you literally <laughs> just washed your hands without, like, touching no. or anything? No, I just felt like I needed to wash my hands. Do you think it's connected to the bag? No. This time of day, I always wash my hands. <laughs> <laughs> this is, this is mean, the 7.30 washing. Back off. I get washing your hands, but I feel yeah. like it's connected. Is it wrong to wash my hands? <laughs> Leave me alone. <laughs> but it is connected though, right? Mm. I don't know. Maybe. <laughs>